if you go to RIT, you're thinking about going to RIT, or you've heard of RIT, you're probably aware of the co-op program that we have here. Co-ops are a great opportunity to experience the industry that you want to be in, to understand what you want to do with your degree or your program at RIT, and to just expand your horizons a lot. But the big question is, how do you get that co-op? Hi, my name is Katherine Donnellan. I'm a fourth year mechanical engineering student here at RIT. I've had two incredible co-ops, and I'm here as someone who struggled to get that first co-op to tell you how you can successfully land your first co-op. For those of you who don't know, a cooperative education or co-op for short is a full-time paid work experience that gives you the opportunity to apply what you're learning in the classroom through meaningful work experience. Yeah, I knew that. So where do you even start with all this? The first thing that you wanna do is understand the co-op requirements for your major. This would be how many co-ops you're required to complete, how long those co-ops have to be, what exactly qualifies as a co-op for your major, does it need to be paid, is it okay if it's unpaid, uh, what can substitute for a co-op, so you know any entrepreneurship opportunities or research opportunities, and when you're scheduled to go on co-op. You can ask your career services coordinator for more information about your specific major and requirements for co-op, or you can also look up your major or your program on RIT's career services webpage. When it comes to resumes, they typically vary across different majors and industries, but in general, you usually want to include work experience, projects, and skills that you have on your resume. For past work experience, it's okay if you don't have experience in the industry that you're going into. It's important to highlight what you have done, even if you don't think you've done much. You'll just never know what will stand out to a recruiter. However, if you do have industry experience, the recommendation that I've gotten from employers is to push that above any other work experiences to show your credentials in the industry. If you don't have work experience, that's okay. This is where you're gonna shine with your projects. This project section can include projects that you've worked on in the class, in clubs, or even independently. Building a PC or working on a car are great examples of projects that I've seen on resumes. For work experience and projects, you want to keep the description short and concise with one to two sentences or two to three bullet points, just summarizing and describing what you did, what you learned, and what skills you used in that job or that project. For the skills section, I personally divide my skills into two different buckets, one for hard or technical skills like softwares or applications that I use, and another for soft or interpersonal skills like communication and leadership. These skills should generally be echoed in your work experience or your project descriptions. For example, if I put down SolidWorks as one of my skills and I use that software in one of my personal projects, I probably want to emphasize that in my description of the project by saying that I use SolidWorks to model specific parts or build a bill of materials. Work experience, projects, and skills are the three major things that you typically want to have on your resume, but depending on your major or industry, it might also be helpful to include relevant coursework or any certifications that you have that are applicable. If you've been searching for a co-op, but you've been sleeping on all the free resources that RIT provides around campus to help you find that co-op, you're missing out. RIT has a lot of great events throughout the year and especially around career fairs to help you with networking, preparing for job applications, and preparing for interviews. Some of these events include resume reviews, mock interviews, and meet and greets or information sessions directly with employers. I personally have gone to quite a few resume reviews which are fantastic for getting live and detailed feedback on your resume. And I've also gone to a couple of mock interviews, which were great for being exposed to a lot of standard interview questions, practicing those questions, and also just like getting out your nerves. These events are listed on RIT's student events calendar and RIT's career portal, which is also a great resource for getting more information about any co-op related resources on campus. Also, check your email inbox. I know it's annoying. I know we get a lot of emails. But I found out about a lot of the career-related events on campus through my email, so definitely keep an eye out there. Application deadlines and timelines tend to vary based on your major or your industry, but the best practice is to just start early. I would recommend starting to search for co-ops about two semesters before you're scheduled for your co-op, just so that you can keep an eye on when applications open and when they're due, and so that you don't miss any important opportunities. 
If you happen to know an upperclassman in your major or your program who's done a co-op before, they might be able to give you some good insight on when they started applying for co-ops and when you should probably start applying for co-ops. In general, some good places to apply for internships or co-ops are LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor, or any other sort of job board site uh, that has a lot of open positions and uh, hiring employers. RIT does have its own specific job board, and if you haven't guessed it yet, it is the RIT Career Portal. It's a really great resource for seeing jobs specific to your major, to your interests, and it's how I got my first co-op. You can also look into specific companies that you want to work for, like, you know, Apple or Google or Wegmans, shout out. Uh, and search their web pages to see if they have any jobs specifically open for interns or co-ops. A big place where a lot of students go to look for co-ops and actually get co-ops is the career fair. It's scary! Yeah, there are a lot of recruiters there. It's overwhelming. It's a lot. But you can make it quick. You can make it efficient. So before the career fair, I always sit down and I look at the list of recruiters that RIT has at that, you know, specific semester's career fair. I'll look at the specific companies that I want to see, I'll star them, I'll write them down. Usually I'll write down the company name and the description of the company, uh, just so that I know for myself. Uh, some of them are pretty similar, so it's really helpful to have that specific description when you're going up to your recruiter. And then I'll typically like prioritize a couple of companies, the ones that I really want to go to, and then I have my backups. Most importantly though, I will write down their booth number. This is great for mapping out where you want to go in the career fair, but also just remembering where you are and figuring out where you need to go. Because it's confusing. There are a ton of booths there. There are a ton of people there. It's easy to get lost, but Having that number of the booth that you need to go to and being able to see it and visualize it, that's what you want. So there are a few things that you want to prepare before you go to career fair. You definitely want to have a resume, step one, but you probably want to have a hard copy version of your resume, typically between 10 and 20 so that you can give them out to recruiters. It really goes a long way when you can hand your resume to a recruiter, they can look through it in real time with you. Printing services at RIT are available at the hub, the library, or sometimes at specific printing centers within your department. Next to your resume, you also want to prepare an elevator pitch. This should be a quick and concise introduction of who you are, your major, your year, one to two work experiences or projects that are important to you, and what you're looking for in a co-op. You also want to prepare some questions for the employers that you're wanting to talk to. You can ask about the work culture at that company, why they like that company, uh, what sort of projects you would be working on as a co-op at that company, or if you want to go the extra mile, you can do some research on that employer before the career fair and ask them more specific questions. When you're going to career fair, you want to wear a pretty professional outfit to make the best impression on employers, but sometimes it's not the most comfortable thing. For me, my shoes are always uncomfortable. If you've worn heels before, you know what I mean. Uh, so my hack has been to wear sneakers to campus and keep my heels in my backpack. And then I'll change into them before and after career fair. And I'll usually utilize the uh, locker rooms in the SLC to do that changing and to also keep my stuff uh, just tucked away while I'm at the career fair. And that way I don't have to walk around with a backpack and a bunch of other stuff. I just have my resume and my portfolio and I'm ready to go. Now, as I mentioned before, you want to bring your resumes along with a notebook and a pencil or pen with you to the career fair. And something that has been useful for me in past career fairs is a pad folio. It is something that you can store your resumes, a notepad, and uh, just any extra accessories in. These can be found on Amazon or at Staples or at Office Depot. But if you can't get a hold of one, that's really okay. The most important thing is to have your resumes and to have a notebook and some sort of writing utensil just to show that you are engaged and uh, you know are interested in those recruiters. Now, while you're at the career fair, if you have to wait in line, that's okay. It's a little tiring, but it's usually worth it and if you need to maximize your time i would recommend either getting there early if you can or just going to tables that don't have a long line 
And as I mentioned before, if certain employers really took the time to talk to you or stood out to you, uh, definitely go connect with them on LinkedIn or reach out to them via email and include a more personalized note, just summarizing the connection that you made and thanking them for the time that they gave you. The last piece of advice that I want to give you for going to the career fair is to just get a lot of rest the night beforehand. You probably don't want to be up until 1 or 2 in the morning doing homework or preparing for the career fair. So if you can try your best to get your assignments or any sort of prep work done before the career fair, uh, that is what I'd recommend. You want to get a lot of rest so that you feel your freshest and your best and you have the bandwidth to talk to a lot of recruiters and do as much networking as possible just so that you can get the most out of that one day. Interviews are a part of the job application process, and if you haven't done interviews before, they can be a little bit intimidating. So my best piece of advice is to take a deep breath and remember that at the end of the day, the person that you're talking to is human too. They're not gonna care a lot if you stumble over a couple of words or if you hesitate a little bit. They're gonna care about who you are and how you're presenting yourself. So just be true and candid to yourself and you know, put your best foot forward. When you're being interviewed, you want to dress professionally. If that's an in-person interview, you want that to be uh, professional from head to toe. And if it's virtual, it can just be, you know, your upper half. But again, you want to present a professional version of yourself. If you are being interviewed virtually, it's important to have a professional background. So, uh, you know, a background that's free of clutter or mess, you know, if there are any dirty clothes on your bed or if your bed is unmade and it's in the background, either try to find a different location or clear out that mess just so that you look overall professional. You also want to be aware of your surroundings and be in a calm and quiet environment where you're not going to be very distracted or bothered. If you have pets, I would recommend putting them in another room just so that they're not going to bother you. I would generally say that it's unprofessional to have your pet jump up on the desk or table where you're interviewing and uh, you know walk in front of the computer and the camera multiple times would not recommend doing that i'm not speaking from experience i'm just you know i'm just assuming here that it's not professional even though we love our pets just putting them in another room or making that space between you and your pet so that you have a calm and quiet environment is going to help you be the most successful in your interview when you're answering questions you can absolutely take your time to give a response or come up with a response it's totally okay to say i need a couple of minutes to think on this and then I'll give you a response. And if you need a question to be repeated, don't be afraid to ask. You want to have that clarity so that you can give your best response. You always want to answer your questions honestly so that you are presenting yourself truthfully in an interview. But that means that it is okay to say you don't know the answer to a question or you haven't had that experience or you don't think you can answer that question. At the end of an interview, it's always really good to ask questions. It shows that you're engaged and that you're really interested in that company. But it's also something that I like to do to understand the company more, understand specific things that I want to know about that company more. So it's important to ask those questions to understand what kind of experience you'll have and if that aligns with what you want. Some questions that I like to ask interviewers are, what does a typical workday look like from 9 to 5 at this co-op? Or what would my day-to-day -day tasks be at this co-op? I also like to ask what the current co-ops in this position are working on just to understand what my projects will look like at that co-op and if there's something that a past co-op has done that has really stood out to that employer that kind of shows like what you should be aiming for or what you should be you know working towards and how you can stand out to them when you're at your co-op. If there are any qualities of a company that are important for your co-op to have, you definitely want to ask about them here. For me, it was really important to see representation of women in engineering at the company that I was working at, so I would always ask recruiters about what that looked like at their company and how they were supporting women in engineering there. Now, we're just going to get into some general tips and best practices for applying to co-ops. Number one, you want to apply to anything that you're interested in. If you don't meet the required qualifications for a co-op or you don't think you qualify, it never hurts to apply. I also want to say don't limit yourself to a specific industry or location. This is a time for you to explore anything and everything and see what you like and what you dislike. They're both equally important. Relocating for co-ops can feel overwhelming or scary but in my experience it has 100% been worth it for the return that I've gotten from the jobs that I've had. I wouldn't have gotten the job experiences that I had if I didn't relocate and go outside of Rochester for a co-op. And it also pushed me to meet a lot of new people and understand what I want for my life after college. 
On that note, applying to industries or positions outside of your interest can open you up to different companies or job positions that uh, you could be interested in but never considered. When I was applying for my first co-op, I really had my heart set on going into aerospace. I was mainly applying to aerospace companies, but I was also applying to you know any listings that I saw outside of that. And I got an email one day from a company called Shark Ninja asking for an interview. I might have Googled what is Shark Ninja, but once I learned about the company, I took the interview. I learned more about the company in the interview, and I got a job offer, which I took. I ended up having an incredible experience at Shark Ninja that opened my eyes up to the world of consumer products, which I didn't even know was an industry that mechanical engineers could go into. Without taking the chance by applying to any co-op I saw, I never would have been exposed to consumer products and I wouldn't know how much I love the industry that I now want to be in. When you're applying for co-ops, try to apply to as many job openings as you can and don't turn down any opportunity. At the very least, if you end up applying for a company and you interview with them and you get a job offer and you're still not interested in them, you can always decline an offer. The last piece of advice that I want to give you is to not give up if you aren't hearing back from companies or if your applications are getting rejected. The job market is really competitive right now and it does take a lot of hard work to get a co-op. When I applied for my first co-op, I got about a dozen different rejections and it was pretty discouraging. But what I want you to remember is that moment of rejection is just that. It's a moment in time and a moment that you're going to move past. If you put your best foot forward and you put in the hard work, you are going to get your co-op. Now, all of the resources that I've mentioned in this video are linked down below in the caption for your reference. And if you have any questions that I didn't answer here, you can always reach out to your career services coordinator. They're a great resource and they'll always be happy to help. Now, with that being said, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, I wish you the best of luck with your co-op applications and you go get them, Tiger. How did you like your first co-op, Callie? Two paws up.